everyone. Today I want to show you how to measure ingredients when it comes to baking. Baking is a science, which means if we don't measure our ingredients correctly, more than likely the dessert is going to be a flop. So it's really super important that we cover how to measure our ingredients the right way. So I'm going to show you how to measure ingredients using your dry measuring cups, how to use these measuring spoons, how to correctly measure liquids in your liquid measuring cup, and my favorite, which is the kitchen scale. So we're going to cover how to measure ingredients such as flour, which is usually the one that people measure incorrectly, to brown sugar, and so much more. So let's get started on how to measure when it comes to baking. So first of the dry measuring cups. I do recommend that you use metal cups versus plastic. Metal cups are gonna be much more easily cleaned where plastic will tend to kind of hang on to any grease or residue over time. And you want to use your dry measuring cups for anything that needs to be leveled, such as your flour, your sugar, brown sugar, even ingredients like sour cream and honey. Next is the liquid measuring cup. I do recommend that you use a glass versus a plastic liquid measuring cup for the same reason that it's just uh, more easily cleaned, doesn't hang on to any grease or residue and odors over time. So the glass measuring liquid cup has that telltale spout so that you can obviously use it to pour. And it's for anything that you would use to measure anything that would kind of level itself, such as any liquid. So whether that's milk, water, heavy cream, anything that you can pour basically. And to measure using the liquid measuring cup, it's just super important that you keep it on a flat surface and you get down eye level with it. If you try to read the measurement from above, you're more than likely going to get an inaccurate measurement. Next are the measuring spoons. These come in a set of four with the one tablespoon, one teaspoon, half teaspoon, and one fourth teaspoon. And you use these for any small amounts of things such as spices or extracts. And again, you would just wanna scoop and level with these. Next is your kitchen scale. The kitchen scale measures by weight, not by volume, which is what the dry measuring cups measure by. When you measure by weight, you're measuring in grams, or ounces versus the volume, which would be measuring in cups. It's a much more accurate method to measure by weight than it is by volume because one person measuring a cup of flour might still end up with a different amount of weight versus someone else. So it's definitely recommended always when you're measuring in baking to measure using a kitchen scale. Now, that being said, I don't normally do that. I do use my dry measuring cups most of the time, except for certain types of ingredients, such as maybe chocolate or fruit or certain types of recipes that are a little bit more finicky, such as macarons. But it's definitely worth investing in a kitchen scale when it comes to baking. So in this next part of the video, I'm gonna show you how to measure your flour the right way and also kind of what not to do. So that you always end up with the correct amount of flour for all of your recipes. So first I have my container of flour here and I just have a spoon in it. I also have a dry measuring cup and I have an offset spatula, but a kitchen knife works as well for this. So first things, I'm going to just take my spoon and I'm gonna start fluffing up my flour. The flour has a tendency to get packed down in as it sits, so you just wanna go ahead and give it a fluff with your spoon. Then take your measuring cup and just go ahead and spoon the flour into the cup, and you wanna have a heaping cup of flour. So once you have a heaping cup, take that spatula and just run it right across the top so you have a nice cup of flour, perfectly measured. Here's what not to do though. As opposed to spooning the flour into the cup, you just go ahead and reach right into that canister. You're gonna end up with about 25% more flour than you intended. Another thing to not do is to take that spoon and pack it down into the cup. And the last thing you wanna avoid when you're spooning the flour in is to tap or shake. It causes the flour to settle. What about when a recipe calls for a cup of sifted flour? This means you want to sift before you measure. So to do that, I'm gonna take my sift sifter and just place it on a piece of parchment paper. And I'm gonna go ahead and just place the flour directly into the sifter 
I'm not worried about amount so much right now because I'm going to measure it after. So I'm going, to me I'm going to measure out what I think is about a cup or more and then just go ahead and sift it directly onto the parchment paper. And then once it's sifted, I can now go ahead and measure. And I'm going to do the same exact thing as before, which will just simply to spoon the flour into the cup and then take my spatula and just run it right across the top. Now in this next part of the video, I'm going to show you how to measure your granulated white sugar and also your brown sugar. For white sugar, it's really easy. Just take your measuring cup and just scoop it right directly into the container and just again use that spatula to just level it across the top. Super easy. For brown sugar though, because it's a moist ingredient, you're going to have to take a spoon and just push it down into that cup. You want a packed cup. You can also use your fingers and then just go ahead and level it off. In this next part of the video, I'm going to show you how to easily measure sticky stuff like peanut butter or honey. And I'll show you my little trick for doing that. So to measure sticky stuff like honey, I'm going to take my nonstick cooking spray and just spray the inside of my dry measuring cup. This is going to make it so it's easily released when I go to add it to my bowl. So then just take your sticky ingredient, whether it's peanut butter or in this case honey, and just go ahead and measure it out into your cup and you'll watch just how easily it comes out. Now how to measure your liquids. So you're going to use your glass measuring cup for this. And the glass measuring cup has that telltale spout right there on the side and it also has the measurements along there on the side as well. So you're going to use this for any kind of liquid such as whole milk and you want to get down eye level with it. And this is so that you can make sure that you have an accurate measurement when you are measuring your liquids. Now how to measure small amounts. So now let's talk about using those measuring spoons. When it comes to using your measuring spoons, it's for anything in small amounts like teaspoons or tablespoons, such as baking soda, baking powder, any kind of spices like cinnamon, any extracts like almond or vanilla, and of course your salt. You're going to use those measuring spoons for because you don't need that much. Now with the measuring spoons, you basically just can scoop and level it off. And I just want to show you real quick here with the baking powder specifically. The baking powder can has this really cool built-in leveler right here, so you don't even have to level it yourself. Just go ahead and give it a scoop and just scrape it along that leveler on the side of the can and you'll have one level scoop of baking powder. So in this last video for measuring, I want to show you how to use your kitchen scale. I do recommend using a kitchen scale for best accuracy when it comes to baking. It's much more accurate to measure by weight, which is using the kitchen scale versus by volume, which would be using the dry measuring cups. So I'm just going to place my bowl right on to my kitchen scale and I'm just going to hit zero. And that way I don't include the weight of the bowl in my measurement. I'm going to go ahead and just pour my ingredient right into the bowl. And in this case, I'm measuring out chocolate chips. And what's great is if I over measure, I can simply just pluck them right out. And that's how you use your kitchen scale. Now that we've covered how to measure, let's get to baking.